Hello again, you delightful little monkeys. Sorry I've been away for quite a few months. It was, what, December when I uploaded episode two? I know it's nearly April. And when I say nearly April, it basically is April. I mean, we're like, what, two days, three days? It's Good Friday today. A good Friday to upload my stuff. What I'm going to try and do is upload every other Friday a new episode. Yeah? Um... So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry it's, it's been so long. I've had all sorts going on recently. I had my mum die, and the day after that we had to have my cat put down. It's like, really? It's bad enough having the knife put in, but then having it twisted, and then someone punching the knife, and then flicking it, and then fitting electrodes to it. Do you know what I mean? You just don't need it. Anyway... Hopefully I'm back firing on all cylinders now. Um, I've no idea what I'm going to say for the intro to my John Lennon Imagine episode three. So maybe I won't waffle quite as much as I did before. Or maybe I'll waffle even more because yet again, I've no idea what I'm actually going to be talking about. I mean, do I really need to say anything before the episode starts other than please, please allow for the obviously the sound quality. It was recorded years ago on an iPhone. Nothing against iPhones. iPhones are perfectly nice, although I do use Android now. That's my personal choice. <laughs> but anyway, um, actually, just if, if you can get hold of it, whoever replaced Steve Jobs, just tell him, right, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, okay, there's probably newer ones since then, the whole way that it, you know, the way it unfolds, yeah? Just tell him to make one like that, and I'll come back with my tail between my legs. I will quite happily go back to an iPhone, but if they can't be bothered to make one that unfolds and has a bigger screen, and yes, it's I actually use it. It's not just a novelty. What the hell am I talking about? Why am I talking about this stuff? Anyway, um, sadly, in episode three, oh my God, I'm already very much underselling it, aren't I? Um, uh, the um, Natalia character, who was Christina in real life. Um, She's not in this one, as mentioned in the previous one. She was only meant to feature in one. It was just a cameo, but it was such a good frigging cameo, like I mentioned in that one. She comes back in, I think, maybe episode five, and then she's properly back in it. And oh my God, I can't wait for you to hear. Basically, the episodes get better and better. And it's not a case of, oh, it was because I was new to writing. And so, you know, I guess the writing just got better. Now the story just gets bigger and bigger. But anyway, um... Yeah, there was one thing that I didn't mention in the in the twenty minute long near um, intro to episode two. Um, I was actually going to ha- have um, Christina. She was going to record her bits. I know they were only rough recordings anyway, but I really wanted her to do it. But bloody hell, she didn't sound anything like the real her. I sounded more like the real her than she did. For instance, um, one of her <clears throat> one of her lines had to be. That bus, that bus went much longer route this time. I think, I think bus driver was drunk and he was Polish, right? But she was like, that bus went much longer route this time. I think the bus, and I'm like, no, 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 sweetheart, go. That bus went much longer route this time. I think bus driver was drunk and he was Polish. And she went, okay, that bus went much longer route this time. I think the bus, don't worry, sweetheart, I'll get this. Anyway. As I say, episode three does not feature a... Why am I still talking an absolute waffle? I need to just press play on this. So, I say, please allow for the poopy quality of the sound. I will be recording... Well, no, I am recording. I'm, I've am i already done episode, I think, eight and some of nine, whatever. Um, I'll be uploading these every two weeks, right? So, by the time you've done episode seven, episode eight will be... Ooh. Ooh, that's a nice sounding quality one. It'll sound like my foot dance recording. And if you've not heard the foot dance recording, what the hell is wrong with you? My goodness me, you're meant to listen to foot dance. I put so much work into that. And it's completely unpaid. God, I hope I make money from some of this stuff sometime. All of it, hopefully. Oh, and sometime soon, because seriously, I just don't have money. But I do have talent, I hope, anyway. I hope you agree, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, um... Yeah. Oh, what the hell am I talking about? You can tell I've suffered trauma, can't you? Actually, I I was just just as much of a friggin' idiot before I had any trauma. That said, I've had plenty of trauma in my life. 
Oh, you don't need to know about that, do you? No, you just want to think that I'm a happy, laughing, lovely guy. Ha, 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 that's right. Oh, let's chuckle. Anyways, um, as I say, this is my John Lennon Imagine Story, episode three. And um, maybe I'll say hello again at the end. I've no idea why, but you know I'm gonna. Gunu? Who says Gunu? Episode 3. We open on news reports of major American news channels, CNN, CBS and ending on Fox News, all saying that the viral video is causing a stir around the world. Claiming that John Lennon is alive and back from the dead, seemingly no older than the day he died 35 years ago. Not since the story of Paul McCartney being dead back in 1967 has there been such rumor and speculation around British band The Beatles, with the internet ablaze as people all around are asking, is John Lennon really back from the dead? As the camera pulls back from the screen, it pans across to see Martin and John appearing to watch, but both asleep, exhausted from watching the news channels all night. As Martin dreams, God visits him. So, it's been exactly seven days since I left John in your capable hands, and how have you found it? Well, this last five days have really been a case of lying low, just sitting and waiting patiently for the buzz to start online around our video, and then watching it spread. Also, John's been teaching me the guitar and how to cook. Although he's only eaten vegetarian, so I have a big pack of wafer-thin honey roast ham offcuts next to my plate. This way, with every mouthful of his food, I just dip my hand in the pack and add one of my own. So I chew both meals at the same time. I've been noticing this last 48 hours, things have really been hotting up. Yeah, John made us a curry a couple of days ago using his own blend of herbs and spices. And frankly, I've been shitting through the eye of a needle ever since. Uh, I actually meant that it seems as though your video has caught the wave, so to speak. Oh yeah, 5 million hits and counting as of last night. It took us a couple of days before we even broke a thousand hits, but then as of three days ago, we were refreshing the screen every minute, and each time it had gone up in the thousands. And how have you found this new fame? It's been a bit of a roller coaster, really, and I've been loving it. Although we've had a few Twitter trolls, one keeps saying that I must be gay, and that John is gay, and that Natalia must be a lesbian because she'd never be interested in a big gay like me. And how is the lovely Natalia? Well, I proposed to her the other day. Congratulations! Yeah, I had to do something to stop her asking questions about why the front page of all the papers were saying John was one of the Beatles and back from the dead. And she said yes to your proposal? Yeah, she's been looking at dresses ever since. She hasn't even looked at the news. So what are you going to do next? You have the world biding now. Well, today I think I'm going to make another video of John. This time he's going to explain exactly what has happened this last seven days. Then we've decided to wait until we reach 10 million hits on the cat video before we make the next move when we contact the American chat shows. But John doesn't have a passport. Yeah, John can be interviewed over Skype at this stage for his own safety. He doesn't feel comfortable appearing as himself in public just yet. Although we have dressed him up as a woman a couple of times just to get him out of the house. At least I think that was why we did it. Looks like you have this all worked out now. Well, I have a feeling this hasn't even begun yet. If I'm honest, I've no idea how this is going to pan out. Well, I'll be certainly watching on intently. Hang on, that just makes me think of you watching me all the time, like even when it's just me and Natalia. Oh, get over yourself. You think there's nothing else better going on in the world than watching your mating rituals? Well, when you put it like that, I guess. And besides, you only see Natalia at the weekends. And just so you know, it's perfectly healthy to exercise in the week, and it doesn't make you go blind. Ew! I never believed it did make you go blind. And that whole last thing you just said just makes me feel like never touching it again. And you think you can do that? Of course not. I can barely make it till lunchtime most days. Good for you. Oh, now that does sound creepy again. Well, I'm gonna go now. I think you have some business to attend to. What? I don't need to rub one off just yet. No, no, I meant... Ah, ha, had you there. <laughs> Martin, you do make me smile. We aims to please, massa. Oh, hang on, that just sounded racist, didn't it? <laughs> God bless you. And Martin bless you too.
Martin wakes up still sat on the sofa with the TV on the Fox News network as he hears the report that people are starting to say if John was real, he wouldn't be in hiding right now. John. Oi, John. Oh, God, Christ. Oh, hang on. Did we both fall asleep watching the news? Yep. And you're the major topic right now. We need to grab this opportunity. We need to contact the American chat shows immediately. Yeah, forget waiting for the hits to reach 10 million. Totally. 5 million in three days, as of about midnight last night, is frankly stunning enough. Have you checked it this morning? No, I literally just woke up and broke you in straight after. I'll check it now. Martin walks over to the laptop, stands over it and presses refresh. So, John says, Oh, my God. You're not going to believe this. Oh, don't piss about again. What's it on suddenly? Back down to two again, is it? John. Martin now sits down. It's over 11 fucking million. Fuck off! Come here, see for yourself. John rushes over. He too has to sit down as he reads the number. 11,147,375. John presses refresh again. It now says 11,155,668. Hang on, did you just see it go up 8,000 hits in about 45 seconds, the same as me? Yes, I did. You remember I had that email from YouTube the other day saying to sign up for having adverts put at the beginning and we'd get paid a tiny pointless little amount every time it's viewed? Yeah, well I did it. Looks like that tiny pointless little amount ain't going to be so tiny now. I think we will be flying first class after all. But how am I going to do that? I don't even have a passport. Well we need to prove to the world you are the real John Lennon. Then after that, it's merely a process of getting a replacement passport issued. And just how are we going to prove I am? Could they do a DNA test of your bones in your coffin? That is, if your coffin still has your old bones in, and you're not just the same dirty old bones just recycled and recharged. Sorry, mate, but I was cremated. It was one of the first things I looked up after you told me I died. I just needed to see my grave just to believe I actually was dead. So how the hell do we get the DNA test done? DNA is everything nowadays. It can prove or disprove anything. Well, I don't know how these things work out, but can't it just be proved that I'm the father of my sons? Oh, mate, I hate to say it, but only last night after you fell asleep, they were interviewing Yoko and Sean, who both said that this was a fake and sick publicity stunt, that they were not going to even discuss any further and give credibility to it by endorsing it in any way. Well, there's still Julian. Really? The son you totally turned your back on, and who I'm sure will also think this is a cheap publicity stunt to, I don't know, sell the new iPhone 7 with its super steady shot videoing or something. You do realise your wife and sons will need to distance themselves from this so as not to be made fools of by endorsing it in the event that it does turn out to be the inevitable fraud they think it is. So do you have any ideas where we can get an original sample of my DNA? With that, the Fox News reporter says, I'm here with Dr. Michael Zuck, the Canadian dentist who bought one of John Lennon's wisdom teeth for $30,000 from the daughter of Mr. Lennon's housekeeper, Dorothy Jarlett, at a UK auction back in 2011. Now, Dr. Zuck, how do you respond to the claims that this video is your doing? As I understand, you've been looking into the process of cloning John Lennon from this tooth. While it's true I have been pursuing the concept of cloning John Lennon from the tooth, that was something we weren't looking to do until 2040, to commemorate John's 100th birthday. And I can assure you, the technology to clone a human is still a long way off. But those who are saying this video may be connected with you are split down the middle, saying that you either have cloned him, and this is the result, or that this is just clever special effects and a publicity stunt to raise awareness for your website, JohnLennonClone.com, and more importantly, the money to fund such an ambitious and costly project. Let me make this very clear. This video has nothing to do with me or anyone associated with me and the JL Clone Project. Martin looks at John and says, Well, looks like we've just found someone who has got the proof we need. So how are we going to go about this? Basically, if you're ever going to prove to the world you're the real John Lennon, we need this tooth. 
Hey, they may not even have to do a DNA test. I still have the gap round the back of my mouth where it came from. Mate, this isn't Cinderella. Nobody's going to try and put that dirty old tooth back in your mouth to see if it fits like a glass slipper. Actually, when you put it like that, I'm very glad. We are going to email this guy from your new email address and ask him if he's interested in being part of validating the real John Lennon's existence. After all, if he bought your tooth, he must be a fan. And if he's trying to fund a project to clone you, he won't shy away from the publicity which will skyrocket his plight. Oh, this does seem weird, making contact with some oddball who wants to have his very own copy of me. He didn't come across as an oddball in that interview, just an entrepreneur fan. He could well be a worthy ally. Martin then goes about not only emailing Dr. Zuck, but he decides to video a short message from John to validate the email with the inclusion of a link to it. He starts filming. My name is John Winston Ono Lennon. Oh no, Martin sniggers under his breath from behind the camera. I was born on the 9th of October 1940 in Liverpool, England. I'm best known for being one of the founding members of the Beatles. I was assassinated on the 8th of December 1980 by Mark David Chapman. This may come as a shock to you, as it also has to me, but I am back from the dead. There's then a pause that must be at least 10 seconds. Suddenly, out of the blue, John's bottom lip quivers and his eyes well up. His voice no longer composed, but weak and trembling. He says, You know what, Martin? I can't even keep a straight face saying it out loud. I want to laugh, but there's nothing to fucking laugh about. I'm sick of even having to accept this. It's fucking nuts! This has to be a dream or a fucking nightmare. I just want to wake up. Please, just let me fucking wake up. The camera still rolls. Oh, my God, Martin says quietly. The camera keeps filming. Why are you fucking filming me? What the fuck are you even here for? What are you getting out of this? Martin is now getting worried. This seems to be getting a little too raw. You fucking caused this if it is real. And if it's a dream, why don't you just... Fuck off! You fuck off! I'm not the one who shot you in the back! I didn't take your life and try to get famous! No, I just gave you life and have asked for nothing in return, you selfish prick! Did I ask you for this? Did I? No! And neither did I ask for any of this! And by the way, this is real. It's not a dream and you need to just man up and accept it. You want me to man up and accept I'm dead! You're not dead anymore! Actually, you're right. I'm not fucking dead. John now points directly into the camera lens. But Mark David Chapman, you are fucking dead! Martin stops filming. Fuck me, he says under his breath. John now has a maniacal look of hatred in his eyes that no one will have seen in the famous John Lennon before. This is the man who wanted us all to give peace a chance, and Martin had worried why he'd not really vented much this past few days after such devastating news. John had even watched an interview with Mark Chapman, and yet he hadn't shown any reaction to seeing his killer so calmly saying how he'd got John to sign an autograph earlier in the day and that he knew right there and then he was going to kill him later that night. John is now sat down, head in hands. Martin realises he needs to treat him with kid gloves right now. No need to exacerbate things with his own hurt feelings. So, your middle name's Ono, is it? Oh, God, you can't. Seriously, you chose to take on Yoko's surname? That's a bit emasculating, isn't it? Yeah, so now I'm a fairy then. Hey, you could be my fairy godmother. Actually, I think it's the other way around, mate. You've basically been my fairy godmother this past week. So we're back to you being Cinderella then. Oh, the Twitter trolls must be right then, ducky. John affects a camp voice and a limp wrist which is a little bit old school, but then everything is when you're dealing with a man who's been out of the picture this last 35 years. John and Martin nervously watch the video back. For the first 45 seconds, they're straight-faced. Then the next minute, they have to watch through their hands. Then finally, at the same time, they slowly lower their hands and end jaws dropped. We seriously have to put this on YouTube. If ever there were any doubters, there won't be many left after they see this. I can't let them see me like that, surely. 
I don't know, mate. You need the non-believers to start believing you. And credibility is what you're buying with this video, even if the price is losing your give peace a chance image. So you really think the world is going to accept me like that? Well, I'm a little more concerned with them accepting that you're John Lennon of the Beatles back from the dead. It's a mere blip on your good character that it turns out you're a crybaby psycho. Oh, God. You really do know just what to say, don't you? The video is uploaded and the email sent to Dr. Zuck. Five hours later... Right, well, I've finished emailing all the major talk shows in America and I've included a link to our new video. I've also put a hot link on our cat video so viewers only have to click the screen and it plays the new one. So what are the hits on the new one? Actually, I'll have to check. Let's have a look. But don't expect much today. Our last one took a couple of days before it even broke a thousand. And people have to know it's there. And they only know about the cat video. And that was only initially because it had a cat playing piano on it. Oh yeah, I forgot how it all works. You gotta remember, this is all new to... Martin cuts him off mid-sentence. John, come here. I don't understand how, but... What? He gets up and walks over to the laptop. The new video is already at 7 million, and the cat one had gone up by the same 7 million, which means every person who's watched the cat video since this morning has then clicked the hot link and watched the new video straight after. Jesus Christ! Hey, what are people saying in those comments? Oh, yeah, I forgot to disable the comments. Normally people just talk shit for the sake of it, but I suppose we might as well see what they're all saying now they have a little more evidence that you're very much real. Here's the last three comments. So it is true, John Lennon really is back. How can this be? He really has come back from the dead? Um, and the last one, the world as we know it is over. Long live the new one. Bloody hell, mate. They're believing you. Are there any negative comments? Yeah, is one saying, don't worry, Mark Chapman is free tomorrow. He'll soon finish the job he started in 1980. Wow. That is one warped individual. You get this with the internet, though. It's like alcohol. Once people have too much, they show their true side. The internet is fine for paying bills, transferring money and buying stuff. But when you leave people too long online and give them a platform to voice their opinions, they show just how racist, homophobic, xenophobic and filled with deep, dark hatred they really are. Yeah, that guy sounds like a real sweetheart, doesn't he? As it happens, I've had my fair share of hate mail over the years for being successful and especially for being outspoken. Yeah, there's still a couple of doubters saying that this is all just a ploy to keep Mark Chapman in prison and we're not going to allow it. What do they even mean, they're not going to allow it? Hang on, why are they siding with my killer? Ooh, weird, their names are alike. Chapmanite17 and Chapmanite142. Creepy. Hey, are there any more of these Chapmanite arseholes? Hold on, let me scroll down through all the nice comments. There's pages and pages of them. Well, nice to know they're mostly saying nice things. Here we go, a couple more of these Chapmanite tosses. And what are they saying? Well, Chapmanite418 says, if this is the real John Lennon, he's an even bigger fraud than we thought. Wow, what's his problem? How the fuck am I a fraud? It gets worse. This can't be the real John Lennon because our glorious leader smited that self-righteous hypocrite and sent him to hell. Fuck me! Glorious leader? Oh, so you don't have a problem being called a self-righteous hypocrite then? Mate, I've been called all sorts over the years. It comes with the territory, especially when you're not willing to just toe the line and don't mind rubbing people up the wrong way on a daily basis. There's a lot of angry people out there who certainly don't want peace. Yeah, it would appear they're called Chapmanites. Where the hell have they suddenly spread up from? I've never even heard of Chapmanites before. Do you reckon there's something new? Well, I'm scrolling down through literally thousands of comments, mostly positive, and it seems to be any negative ones are nearly all from Chapmanites. And what's more worrying is that they speak like they're disciples of Mark Chapman, and these numbers next to their names, they're going into the thousands, like, here we go, Chapmanite2631. 
So you think my killer now has thousands of disciples? Well, there's definitely something strange going on. I've never seen that sort of thing before. When they all have the same name, just a different number after. The worrying thing about those numbers is that it's most likely there is an official club or something where these numbers are issued. I'm assuming in order of when they joined. Puts a chill down your spine just thinking there's an organized movement or maybe even a cult possibly formed in light of your return. That quick? You think they've only just formed since I came back? I don't know, mate. It just seems a little convenient timing-wise, don't you think? I mean, I've never heard about Mark Chapman having a following before, but then I guess he is being released from prison tomorrow, and that in itself has been worldwide news. Maybe you coming back at the same time has kind of captured the imagination of every friggin' weirdo out there. They probably think there's a big showdown on the horizon, like you're the second coming of Christ and he's Damien Thorne in Omen 3, The Final Conflict. There's an Omen 3? I love Omen 1 and 2. Yeah, and Omen 3 is a pretty good sequel. If a little dated looking, but then, as it's from 1981, you'll probably think it's futuristic. Well, by a year maybe. You taking the piss again? Oh no, please, no more threats of violence, Mr. Give Peace a Chance! You're not gonna let me get it over that little outburst, are you? It was pretty legendary, though, and somewhat disturbing, like watching a nun punch a priest in the balls. I was totally crazy for the moment there. Well, at least you're not as crazy as these delightful Chapmanites who kind of make you look normal. Yeah, at least I'm not resorting to calling a mad gunman glorious leader just yet. Gotta say, I didn't anticipate this Chapmanite movement thing. See, I was expecting the odd negative comment, like this one from someone with the unfortunate name of Pig Lovin, who rather eloquently says, fuck that clone and his cat. Christ, nearly all of that was spelled wrong. He can't even spell and. He's having a go at the cat as well. Yep. God bless you, pig-loving, you silver-tongued devil. So do you think I need to be concerned about these Chapmanites? I mean, what if they're dangerous, not just talk? Hmm, good point. You know I had the Ku Klux Klan after me at one point, after I'd been misquoted as saying the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. I thought you'd said you guys were bigger than Jesus. Oh, so I've been misquoted again? Well, it was actually on an episode of The Simpsons. Do I need to know who The Simpsons are? Oh yeah, it's a cartoon that's so popular and witty, it's been going nearly 30 years now. And you're the only Beatle who hasn't been on it. Paul, Ringo and George all recorded their own voices for their cameos. I wish I hadn't been shot four times in the back and died 35 years ago now. Well, let's not let that happen again and proceed with caution. Now we know these Chapmanites are out there anyway. You never know who's the next scary weirdo who wants to be named as the second man to kill John Lennon. You're beginning to make me feel like I wish I'd just started again with a clean slate and a new identity. I could have been a shepherd or something in the middle of nowhere and no one to recognize me. Mate, your flock is right here saying all these nice comments. They want you to show your face now, not hide behind sheep in the Brecon beacons, or even behind a computer. Hey, good point. See if we've heard back from the talk shows yet. After spending three hours wading through pages and pages of emails sent through YouTube, Martin finds replies from all of the talk shows. This is getting really serious now. They all want you on their show. Are you ready for your comeback? I think so. I'd like to say, oh yes, of course, but if I'm honest, I've never been so scared in my life. I'll be with you all the way, I wouldn't worry. Even though I'm a nobody, God seems to think I'm somebody. Martin, you're not a nobody, and I'm going to make sure the world knows who brought me back and has been taking care of me since. You're coming on TV with me, mate. Shit. Do you think they want me on their show? Surely it's just you that was in the Beatles, and you who was assassinated, and you who came back from the dead. I, however, sold a couple of mint on card Star Wars figures recently on eBay, and also some Smokey and the Bandit bits and bobs. You brought me back from the dead. Actually, God brought you back from the dead. I was just the idiot he overheard spouting beer talk in the pub, and then for some reason he did what I asked and brought you back then left me to take care of you. 
So don't you want to be here with me in all this? Of course I do. This is the most fun I've ever had. So it's settled then. You're in this with me all the way. Now, who do we pick of the talk shows? Hmm, let's see who pay the most. They'll fight tooth and nail for this exclusive. Oh, I hadn't even thought about the fact they might pay. I wonder who'd pay the most. How about we let all ten bid? Then we choose the three highest offers and do a special one-off with all three hosting. Bloody hell, that's genius. Well, making people want something and creating a bidding frenzy is my world. You should have seen how much I got for that smoking the bandit stuff. About an hour goes by, with Martin in the kitchen permanently busy on the phone to various TV networks. John, meanwhile, is in the lounge watching YouTube and the infamous 1992 Larry King interview with Mark Chapman once again. John gets up, walks unemotionally into the kitchen and says, I want Larry King there. Oh, hold on a moment. Martin puts his call on hold. What's that, John? I don't mind what other three interviewers you find. I just want a fourth one. I want Larry King. But he wasn't even on my list. I think his show is like just an online thing now. He's an ancient man, pretty much retired from the major networks. Well, I want to have him there so I can ask him what kind of person gives publicity to a man who killed to get fame. Okay, it's your interview. As Martin ends his final call, it's now time to wait for the calls back with their offers. He walks back into the lounge where John is glued to the TV screen as the news is talking about the video. As we see here, the man claiming to be John Lennon appears to have a nervous breakdown. It is this seemingly unscripted part of the video that is having many out there start to believe that this is the real thing. Wow. I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now that the world thinks I'm having a nervous breakdown. I wouldn't worry, mate. They thought you were dead the other day. Actually, you were dead the other day. Anyway, it wasn't a nervous breakdown. It was just a hissy fit. John's little gay rage. Christ, you do have the talent of trivializing anything, don't you? Seriously, you think you went nuts in that video? Nothing compared to me one time when this old fucker in his rover tried to reverse into this parking space I was stood in. I was holding it for my mate who was just about to reverse into it from the other side. I said nicely to this old bastard, Oh, sorry, we're already parking here. He said, I don't care. It's happened to me before. Like that makes it okay. Anyway, so this posh old tosser with his walnut dashboard continues reversing and I tap on the back of his car and go, Oi, I said we're parking here, to which he completely ignores me and starts pushing me out the way with his car. As I step out of the way, shocked that he's physically nudging me out the way with his car, he drives onto my fucking foot. Fucking hell, you're on my foot. I'm screaming at him, get off. And he still does nothing. So here I am, foot trapped under his back tyre, and he's ignoring me and not budging. Now, I'm not a violent man. Not because I've always thought, oh, give peace a chance, but purely because I'm too lazy to be violent most of the time. But fuck me, you should have seen what I turned into, like a wild animal cornered. I went Fucking nuts. Punching his car, kicking the fuck out of it with my only available foot. I seriously dented his rover. And as I managed to free myself, I walked around the front of his car and stood looking at him and just said, You can't! Then stepped aside as he hastily drove away in his newly dented rover. Want to know the best bit? My mate didn't want to fucking park there anymore. Can't! Wow. Just wow. So there, you're not nuts. You're just a whiny little bitch. Oh, God. Thanks for the all clear, Doctor. What do I owe you for this consultation? Nothing, my friend. The first half an hour is free. But if you want me to put in writing, he's not nuts, he's just a bit of a knobber, on a certificate you can frame, that will be extra admin costs and that. With that, John is distracted as his wife Yoko Ono and John's son, Sean, appear on TV. Yoko says, That may look like John, but my husband would never act like that. He only wanted peace in this world. Then cut straight to Julian Lennon, 
My dad did scream and rant on occasion. This new video was actually a lot more convincing because it really was just like my dad at times. The sight that my mom and I saw and no one else did. John is transfixed to the screen. I can't believe I've just seen Yoko and Miss Sons. It felt like I could just shout out and then they'd hear me and realise I'm back now and everything's all right. So you don't have any problem with Julian saying you did scream and carry on sometimes? That was right back in the early days, when we started to make it big, and I was away for months at a time. It caused a lot of arguments between me and Julian's mum. Poor lad, had to hear it all. It's not like that anymore. Uh, hang on, I just saw you on the news like that, as did the rest of the world. Yeah, thanks to you. Yeah, well it's obviously worked, as even one of your sons is starting to get convinced. Imagine how it'll be once we've done the interview. With that, the phone rings, and Martin goes to the kitchen to answer. He doesn't come out until more than three hours later, as one call overlaps the next. He comes back into the lounge and says, It's done. You want the good news or the bad news? Or the bad news first, I guess. Get it over with. Oh. Oh, it's actually easier if I tell you the good news first. It makes more sense then. All right, Christ, just get on with it. Well, the good news is, after much negotiation, NBC are going to put on a two-hour special hosted by Ellen DeGeneres, Jimmy Fallon, Conan O'Brien, and I've even got you your Larry King. Oh, my God. So this really is happening. Oh, yeah. And they're willing to pay a cool one million dollars. But there's just one catch. You see why the bad news had to come after, yeah? Jesus, John frustratedly head in hands. Right, well, the bad news is they won't pay a penny until the results of a DNA test that they themselves will take at the beginning of the show. They will use a studio in London with a satellite link up to America where the hosts are. They don't want it to be just over Skype, it turns out, just in case we're using some clever computer trickery to make you look like that bloke from the Beatles, John something, you know the one. Oh, yeah, I know who you mean. Oh, God, he's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Lemon, that's it, John Lemon. That's him. I always get him mixed up with their drummer, Bingo. Oh, oh Christ, bloody Bingo. Well... They said the results of the DNA test will be 15 minutes before the end of the show, and we only get paid if you are the real John Lennon, not a penny if you're not. Although that's a bit scabby, isn't it? I mean, if you turned out to be a fraud, they still have got the same ratings worldwide and sold just as many premium ad breaks. I guess they're calling our bluff, really, with that, to see if we flinch and maybe if we kicked up a load of fuss about not making any money if you're a fraud they'd know that we knew the DNA test was going to come back negative before they wasted their time and reputation on a fraud. Not a problem. I know I'm the real thing. And soon will the rest of the world, and we'll be one million dollars better off. And more to the point, you'll be officially recognised as John Lennon from the Beatles, back from the dead. What are they going to use to prove it? And when is this going to happen? Do you know what? They've already confirmed Dr Zuck's tooth Hey, that's actually my tooth. Yeah, it's his now. He paid $30,000 for it. And can you believe how quickly they sorted that out? We still haven't had a reply from the email we sent him. Yet in that last hour, they decided they wanted the tooth, contacted Dr. Zuck, and agreed on a deal to take a DNA sample from it and even have a DNA testing lab on standby, ready to go for tomorrow night. Bloody hell, tomorrow night?! Oh yes, the Americans don't waste time. Speaking of time, we're filming at 10pm Pacific Standard Time. Apparently that's 5am to us. And they're clearing the schedules for then. And syndicating all around the world like the royal wedding. Which royal wedding? Oh my god, of course. You managed to miss the weddings of not only Charles and Diana, but then a whole generation later, their son and our future king and queen, William and Kate. An awful lot happens when you turn your back, doesn't it? Yeah, especially when it's for 35 years. Well, looks like we've got a big day tomorrow. It's certainly going to be the biggest day of my life. You know, I think it's going to be the biggest day of mine as well now. Is there anything we need to do to prepare? I don't know. Put on a DVD? And that's the end of episode three. 
definitely come back for episode four. As I say, it just gets bigger and bigger, and I'm really proud of it, you know? Do bear in mind where... Okay, these bits weren't written in prison, yeah? This was written while I was just starting my naughty cannabis empire. Um, <clears throat> i got to think, let me think. These bits... Uh, was I still... Yeah, I was still living in the nuclear bunker cannabis factory. Um, but of course, by now, it was just little old me. Um, I think it was literally around that time where... Christina had disappeared off. Back to Latvia. I go for Latvia. You crazy. You go to prison one day. And I did. Fiddle dee dee. Eh? But, um, <clears throat> yeah. Hey, I've only got about, was it two, three months left on license? Exciting. Amazing. So I'll no longer, be, I'll, well, I'll still be a dirty, filthy criminal the rest of my life. But, you know, a reformed one. Hang on, am I still a criminal if I'm no longer on licence? Like, am I still a criminal if I'm not doing criminal things anymore? I don't know. I'm not a bad person, you know? I mean, just think of me as a silly sausage. I don't see myself as ever being a criminal. <laughs> Funnily enough, the UK court system definitely felt different on that. See you soon.